Uh, today, friends, we are going somewhere I actually haven't really gone before. Well, not often. Now, normally I shoot a lot of action, sports, and fitness stuff, but today I'm going to be talking about music videos, which is completely uncharacteristic of myself, but I'm open-minded enough to know that I'll try anything once. Well, almost anything once. Today's video is going to be about a cinematic breakdown of a music video that I had recently shot on the Red Komodo X. This is going to be the first one that I've shot on the system, and every time I say the word however, you have to take a shot. Let's begin. Now, this song hasn't come out yet. The music video is still being edited, not by myself, but Omar Afuni actually reached out to me on Instagram, who's actually a subscriber on this channel. Now, we're gonna talk a little bit later about YouTube actually getting you work in real life, but he did come to me with a song that's like super poppy, it's really catchy, and kind of gives you that Justin Timberlake future love sex sounds back in the earlier 2000s. And if you guys don't know that album, I'm kind of too old for you to be watching. Now, the three things that are gonna be the most important for music videos, at least in my experience, is location, location, and, uh, well, location. Now, this is a big shout out to Viva Studios in Toronto. Now, not only do I have a great rental shop that I actually leave my own equipment personally, but they do have an outstanding space with a giant psych wall and four aperture novas in the ceiling with full RGB. Now this is actually gonna come in handy because working with psych walls and only having one location, when you have RGB lights in the ceiling that you can move around, you're gonna be able to make a couple of looks. In fact, Omar actually found me on a previous video on a gimbal review that I did with Victor Laforteza and we did use a very similar setup, but I got to expand on it using this music video. Now in this music video, we actually use three different setups. Now I did mention before I'm using my Red Komodo X. Now the only other music video that I have shot on this year was on the Red Raptor, which is a much heavier setup and it kind of sucked and my back hurt. So having the Red Komodo X is really nice because it's also super versatile. So versatile in fact that we did have three setups on this music video shoot. We had our dolly slider movements, we had stuff on sticks, and we also had stuff on a gimbal as well. Now the dolly slider is how we started off the day because it is one of the hardest movements and it is the hardest to get the timing down. The dolly slider movement had to be in line with the shot when the song actually started, and there was one other element that we included, but there is one quirk with that element that I'll talk about in a little bit. Now, in terms of the lenses that I'm using, I actually use a set of the Zongyi Midicon Speedmaster lenses. These lenses have a little bit of character to them, and I did mention in a previous video that the 20 doesn't necessarily match up entirely with the rest of the set, but because we're using RGB lights, it's actually a little bit more than fine because you're gonna make those adjustments to that color in post. Now, I did use all three lenses in the 20, the 35, and the 55 to get my coverage, as well as we also set everything up to the DJI transmission system because I did have a first AC pulling focus for me. Now, when you're using cinema lenses, you might wanna have someone pulling focus or you get to pull by hand, but in situations where you have a gimbal or a slider, it's probably best that you have someone pulling focus so you could worry about the movement. Now, we also had the camera on a gimbal as well, where we did use a DJI RS3 on a gimbal ring as well to add for more comfortability. Now, I wax and wane between between using an easy rig and not using an easy rig, and sometimes it actually doesn't do very well for me. And halfway through the shoot, I actually ended up taking it off, but that's a completely separate issue. But most of the shoot was on the gimbal to capture the dancing numbers that we had through the performance shots of each of the takes for the song. We also had stuff on sticks just to get a couple close-ups and some pickups to make sure that we got all the shots that we needed and we had some variety through the camera movement because we were only in one location. Now this location actually does have four aperture novas that are on the ceiling and they're all fully RGB and they're incredible powerful lights. Now the way that we wanted to set this up is we wanted to change the color of the background for the different setups that we had throughout the shoot. Now one thing that I realized is just because you have four lights in the ceiling doesn't mean you have to use all of them. So what I actually ended up doing was only using one and putting my subject and everybody in the dancers right in front of the lens to give more of a silhouette effect. That's the reason why you're gonna see a lot of the shots here look kind of like the Apple iPod commercial. Basically what we did was we use a psych wall because it adopts the color of whatever light you're gonna shine on it. And I actually made it red for one of the setups and we used a couple of other colors later. Now the thing with psych walls and essentially it's just a big reflective source is that if you put a powerful light in it and turn off all the other lights, the background is going to look like it is that color. But because white is so reflective, it does cover the entire scene, giving the appearance that we're using different backdrops. 
Now we did have one other light outside of the Novas that are in the ceiling, and that was the 720B by Nanlite. We also added a focus lens on the light itself to give more of a spotlight look. Now this shoot actually has three different looks, three different setups, and three different lighting setups as well. Now the three looks that we went with are gonna be things that are gonna bring out as much contrast as we possibly can. The first outfit and the first look, we have an all black look with red in the background, which actually is my favorite and it's really cool. And then we use the Nanlite 720B as our spotlight in the background to not only give some lift to the dancers so you could see them, but at the same time, it adds to a different look where some shots we didn't use the spotlight at all, and some we turn it on in order to get our performance shots. Then secondly, everybody was gonna go into a red suit. And I kind of had a heads up play here because cyan is the opposite of red. So you'd get a really decent color contrast in terms of getting them to pop off of the background. Typically in one location setups, you wanna try to create as much contrast as humanly possible or try to make things look as big as possible just to make them look a little bit different. And then for our last look, we went with the clean white, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to make the spotlight a little bit warmer just so you could see it pop off the background a little bit more, giving us the three looks that we we're gonna go with. Now, to end this off, we did turn off the spotlight and we kind of went with just using the RGB lights on party mode. So it was cycling between different colors, which really does look like the first time the iPhone shuffle released, but it did work for this music video. Now, for the light that we did use, I did use the Nanlite 720B. Not only is it incredibly powerful, but I also attached a projector on the front of it. Now, there was one quirk that we were using with the Nanlite 720B. Now, everything on the surface works fine. It's incredibly bright, the app works on the phone, and we're able to control everything. However, there was a point where we tried to time up the light turning on with a particular lyric of the song, but the graduation, how you increase the output on the light, isn't the smoothest in the world. When we were doing it, it was a little bit choppy and I couldn't find a setting to actually get myself out of it, which drove me a little bit nuts because I'm sure it's somewhere there because that light is reasonably expensive, but it wasn't something that I could find right away and we had to scrap it and go with another plan. Now, single location shoots in any type of video format is going to be a little bit tricky and you wanna make sure that you vary things up to keep the audience engaged. And we did that in a couple of different ways by changing the setup and the camera movement, the different looks and the outfits the artists and the dancers were wearing and also our lighting setups as well. You also wanna separate your performance shots from some of your B-roll shots, which actually takes a little bit of the edge off. Once you have your performances, you're able to capture a little bit of B-roll to help support the music video itself. Now with music videos in general, what I'm starting to learn is that you don't necessarily have to have perfect B-roll. It doesn't have to be perfectly narratively sound, which adds to the creativity a little bit, but it also takes off some of the stress. This was also a really good time for me to test out the slow motion on the Red Komodo X, and it did a really good job and everything looks really cool. Cool. Okay, so after the shoot's all done, everything's packed up, you've come home, there's one thing that you need to do the second that you're settled, and it's this. You gotta take this card, put it on your computer, and back up your footage. Now, everything across this video, the lighting, the camera, the lenses, the camera moves, the dancers, the studio, all of that doesn't matter if you're not backing up your footage. This is something that you wanna keep in mind as a preemptive caution. However, for everything else or if something goes wrong, we have today's video sponsor, which is going to be EasyOS. Now, EasyOS is going to be a memory recover service. And basically what ends up happening is that if something goes wrong with how you backed up your data or where you store things, if something malfunctions, you can go to EasyOS to help recover broken and lost files. Having that security and having that peace of mind that even when you try to do everything right and something might go wrong, having something like a recovery service is going to come in clutch just in case. Now that's not to say you should have bad backup workflow or bad memory storage workflow, but EasyOS is going to be able to keep you covered just in case things are lost. Including one particular hard drive brand that might have a couple of failures that some people aren't incredibly happy about. EasyOS is actually going to be great because it does do hard drive recovery for those SanDisk SSD drives. If you guys do want to check this guy out, I did leave a link in the description down below for you guys to save some money off, but special shout out to EasyOS for actually sponsoring this video. But let's get back into it and talk about more tips that you need for music video shooting. Now, I don't come to you guys as a master of music videos. In fact, I haven't done a lot of them, but if I'm gonna offer you any wisdom, particularly three different things, uh, here's what I would say. Now, number one is going to be prep days with your crew. Now, first of all, shout out to the crew that actually was on this production set. Uh, a lot of times when I'm working on different videos, I tend to try to do things on my own, but I'm quickly realizing that I just can't do that anymore and it's not going to work. So bringing out a crew to not only help with the setups and rigging, but also having prep for them before for the actual shoot is a great way to have a plan of how we're gonna switch between different setups, and that way we could have different people work on different things. 
when I'm using the camera and I'm using cinema lenses and I need someone to pull focus or my back hurts and I need to put the gimbal down after using it for a couple of takes or when I need someone to operate on the Novas on the iPad that's going to be in the studio while I'm handling the camera, you're going to need more than one person able to do that and having people with you and making sure that you're prepped and ready for the day. And even if you can get into the studio and prep your camera gear to actually work on the day is going to go a really long way. That rhymed. Now, the second thing that you're always going to need with music videos that I find is making sure that you film a master. Now, what I mean by film a master is you want to film a clip that's going to be the entire song. That way, when somebody's editing it, instead of having different parts of the song, they have to kind of mince together. If there's something missing, they can always fall back on a couple of takes that has the entire song performed. That's going to give a really big leg up to whoever's going to be editing this thing. And if it's you that's editing it, you're going to thank yourself a little bit later. For the last thing is going to be keep it simple. Now, I am saying that from two sides of my mouth. We used a red Komodo system with a bunch of lenses and I had a bunch of crew and a bunch of other things. However, you want to make sure that you keep things as simple as possible with the information and the confines that you're given. We didn't try to go to other locations to try to get pickup shots for this music video. We try to keep everything confined into one space to make sure that everything went smoothly and efficiently. If you're somebody that's just starting out in music videos, kind of like myself, try to make sure that you limit as many things as humanly possible in order to get the best creativity. Only having the one location with a psych wall means that I have to think about different ways I want to use the RGB lights or my spotlight or how I want to interact with the dancers or the artist and it creates a better shoot and it creates a better experience. Also, some people just don't want to get dragged around all over the place all day and that does go a long way as well because then your artist doesn't hate you at the end of the day and they're probably the ones paying you. Now, as I kind of land the plane and wrap this up, it's also interesting in how this music video came up in the first place. Actually, both of them. Now. The first music video that I ever shot this year was going to be on the Red Raptor, and that was because I was making a lot of content about using the Red system, and it displayed that I knew how to use a camera and got a camera operating job on set for a music video. And then when I actually did a gimbal review, a subscriber reached out, and then that's how I got onto the set for this video, which actually I found a little bit interesting because there's a lot of chatter about filmmakers not being YouTubers and vice versa, but now I'm getting professional jobs as a filmmaker or as a music video director or whatever you want to call it from this channel just talking about things that I like talking about and making images look pretty, which is also great as well. But what I am going to say is that if you're somebody that might be looking to or humming and hawing about starting a YouTube channel or just sharing your journey as a filmmaker, you actually might make some money from it and not from sponsorships or AdSense, but real people getting you on real jobs. This music video definitely wasn't cheap. There was a lot of moving parts and there was a lot that went into it. And that being a start off point for me into this world kind of spoils me a little bit, but being able to display my skill set actually adds a little bit more value. So when I do have somebody that's inquiring about a video, well, I could just show them stuff on this channel and it might actually work. That being said, if you guys do want to see more videos about breakdowns and things like that, I actually am going to do a lot more of the cinematography on the Red Komodo X versus more of the technical stuff. But I also have other cameras that I'll talk about as well. Now it's your turn. How many times did I say the word however? Because I actually don't know. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.